This chapter of Wizzy's walkabout was a long-awaited one. Izzy has been waiting to return to the Emerald Isle for a long time. The first leg of our Irish adventure was in the north part of the country, just outside of Dublin in Wicklow County. This amazing Airbnb is part of an equestrian center. Dublin is an incredible capital city. It doesn't feel like a metropolis like some of the other places that we've visited. It's very charming, has a ton of character, and as you can hear, the bells of the churches are amazing as well. Being the son of a builder, I quickly fell in love with the stone masonry of Ireland. Dublin is a really walkable city. It's friendly to, to tourists. There's a lot to do, a lot to see. This is actually just outside of Dublin Castle. If a pub experience is on your Ireland bucket list, look no further than the Brazen Head. Looking for a unique dining experience? We recommend the church. This old meeting house was converted to a restaurant. They have traditional Irish step dancing every evening. The Haypenny Bridge spans the river in Dublin and is named because that was what the toll was back in the day, half a penny to cross. Getting around Ireland is fairly easy. Their public transportation system rocks and we quickly fell in love with double-decker buses. Cork County is where Bantry is located in the southwest part of the country and it really is this green. Tree tunnels line every single road. It's beautiful to get around here. Irish wool is a big deal. If you've got the budget for it, pop into one of these shops and pick up a sweater. When Izzy graduated from high school, she came to Ireland with her mom. Izzy's mom has a cousin that lives down here in Bantry and she hosted us while we were here. Kathy is the best tour guide we could have asked for. She took us off the usual tourist track and showed us the real gems of Southern Ireland. One thing Kathy likes to show everyone when they come to visit her is Garnish Island. Even the boat ride is an adventure, but getting there, I mean, you'll see here in the, in the video, but talk about breathtaking beauty. This is God's country. The island is beautiful, but we were especially spoiled because the rhododendrons were in bloom. How big is this? It's probably the biggest leaf we've ever seen. Super spikes. Each of the spikes that you can see on this stem here are about an eighth of an inch long. Ireland has an uncanny uniqueness about it that feels both very old and very young at the same time. This magical juxtaposition can be attributed to the old stonework that is hundreds of years old mixed with the beautiful lush greenery all around that is always new. It's really quite something to experience firsthand. Garnish Island honestly could be called Neverland. I really did feel like Peter Pan running around with my Tinkerbell sidekick, my beautiful best friend, Izzy. On one of our days with Kathy, she took us for a little road trip over to Cary County. We stopped at this cute little music shop where of course the harpist took some incredible pictures and videos. Izzy loved this store almost as much as she loved the chocolate shop. Notice here how all the signs are in both Irish and English. We are walking Kathy's dog, Maisie. We're walking the dog. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Honestly, the best thing that you will do in Ireland is to just stretch your legs and take a walk. You'll see incredibly cool old buildings like that. You'll make some furry friends like these horsies. Man, I absolutely love this place. It's so cool. 
if you're looking for a really unique walking experience, take the ferry from Bantry out to Whitty Island. You'll quickly find that you're the only tourists out there and you've got an island pretty much to yourself. When I look at these cows shoulder deep in their favorite food, I just can't think of a better bovine life to live. If I ever leave this world alive, I'll thank you for the things you did in my life. If I ever leave this world alive, I'll come back down and sit beside your feet. Okay, I think you're starting to believe me when I tell you how beautiful this place is. But what you have to take my word for still is how amazing it smells. The greenery and the flowers just create this intoxicatingly sweet aroma. It's hard to describe, but it really is something. If you know me, I love to make animal friends. And I also love my critters. This little Irish jellyfish greeted us when we made it back to Bantry Bay. On this voyage, Izzy has developed somewhat of an obsession for old cemeteries. We found the old Protestant cemetery in Bantry, and we had a day. Some of these graves dated back to the 1600s, and we even saw some iconic Celtic crosses in the graveyard. We also spent a few nights just outside of a small town called Duras at a B&B run by a delightful retired British couple, Val and Martin. The peninsula that we stayed on was a walker's paradise, and Celtic ruins like this can be found everywhere. There is Mount Corn, where are we headed? Uh, out there. You can't see up over it, but that's it. But we got views like this the entire way. Spoiler alert, we didn't get zapped, but we made it to the top of Mount Corrin and we placed our stones on top of the cairn to mark our own personal voyage up here to this lovely hilltop. As we made our way up to the top of this hill and as we walked around the Irish countryside, I can just picture the generations and generations of Irish shepherds and farmers that have worked this land. In my mind's eye, I could see shepherds of years of old walking the same paths that we did, sticks in hand, tending to their flocks. If the scenery here hasn't charmed you yet, the people most certainly will. While Val and Martin are not Irish per se themselves, they've lived here for several years now. And they are currently waging a losing war against the woodland creatures that keep stealing the produce from their garden. On this magical morning, they were able to procure one strawberry Val has just harvested this strawberry. <laughs> I love it. Wow, I'm perfect. That we split evenly amongst ourselves. Wow, he's totally mad. That was the most delicious quarter strawberry any of us have ever had. As the second largest city in the country, Cork is a bustling town in the southern part of the island. It's got a great pub scene with a lot of live music if you're into that. We were also incredibly fortunate to be in the country during the Gaelic Athletic Games, the Irish sports. Hurling is played with this ball called a sliatar. 
These are protective helmets that you wear while playing hurling. Don't want to take a sleotard to the dome. Just like a sporting goods store back home, you can buy a jersey of your favorite team, or in this case, your own home county. This is an Irish football, and this is Irish football. This was such a fun match to go to. The sport was interesting itself, but the best part was the back and forth in the crowd between the Cork fans and the Kerry fans. We had a blast. So Kerry won, we think. Um, this is so cool, what a cool experience, cool atmosphere. Probably about 15,000 fans here, excuse me, supporters, supporters. Okay, game just ended, We're walking out. All the supporters, it's a great game. No clue how we're gonna try and top that, but we'll give it a shot in the UK.